you for this moment. We thank you because you are going to impact your people. You feel your people. You saturate your people. You will use every one of us in Jesus' name. We pray that you cancel the failures of the past. The tiredness of the past. And with new strength in the spirit. We'll rise up and we'll serve you in Jesus' name. Lay your mighty hands upon your people. Lord, I pray you will use us like we never imagined. We'll have a record in heaven that we lived at such a time like this. And you used us in a way we never thought you would. Every brother, every sister, to have a new anointing. Confirm it in every life, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can see that we're looking at Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 30. Ezekiel chapter 22. We're looking at verse 30. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. And I sought for a woman among them that should make up the edge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. And I sought for a youth among them that should make up the edge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. And I sought for a child among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But I found, tell me, none. Remove that N at the beginning now of that last word. But I found, and I found, is looking for you. He will find you. A man, a woman, a youth, a child. God is looking for somebody he will use. You see, at the time when the children of Jacob, the sons of Jacob, they were little. They were not mighty at all. But God had raised them up that they will fulfill the prophecy and the promise that he gave to Abraham. He sought for a man that the sons of Jacob will not be destroyed. He found one. He found Joseph. There was a time when the children of Israel were in the land of Egypt. They had forgotten about Canaan. They had forgotten about the promise God made to Abraham 400 years before. And then eventually God sought for a man that the descendants of Abraham will not perish in Egypt. And he found one, he found Moses. There was a time when the Gentiles knew nothing about the Christian faith because everything centered in Jerusalem and then in Judea and then in Samaria, full stop. And then God sought for a man that the Gentiles will not be destroyed. And he found Paul. There was a time when all the people that are called Jews, Haman set his eyes on them. He said, it is something below my, in our language, below my dignity to lay my hand on Mordecai alone. All the Jews in Shushan, all the Jews in all the provinces under that king, Ahasuerus, he was going to destroy them. And God sought for somebody and sought for a woman that the Jews will not be destroyed at that time. And he found one, he found Esther. The people of ch the children of Israel, they were under the Amalekites and the Midianites. They were to be destroyed. And God sought for a woman and found one and found Deborah. There was a time God sought for people. He couldn't even find a man, couldn't find a woman, but found a child. His name is Samuel. Another time God sought that the people of Judah 
will not be destroyed. He found just a child. The child even thought, I cannot do this. He found Jeremiah. He will find you today. Yeah. You will do something for God. I'm talking to you tonight on looking for a man. Looking for a man. God is searching. And God is looking that in this generation, if he could find a man, if he could find a woman, if he could find a youth or a child, he will use you to, to the limit of your ability and beyond the limit of your ability in Jesus' name. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the edge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. At the time of Ezekiel, he found none, but in other generations, he found one. In my generation, he will find one. He will find me. Are you there? He will find you. There will be no complaint. I cannot do this. I cannot go there. I cannot touch that. I cannot do that. You will do what God has created you to do. You are not in this world to occupy space. You were created for a reason. And you were redeemed and born again for a reason. That reason God will fulfill in Jesus' name. Looking for a man. Looking for a man. There are three things we're going to consider. Number one, the man God seeks for his use. He's seeking for a man. What kind of man? The man God seeks. For its use. Number two, the messengers God selects for the unusual. The messengers God selects for the unusual. If you are just like every Dick and Harry, what other people have done, then you do that. That's not unusual, but something extraordinary. You will do something somebody in your family has never done. Look at, remember the classmates you are, primary school, secondary school, university, you will do something that your classmates, all the classmates of yours have never done. Remember your colleagues, anywhere you have been, you will do the unusual. You will do the extraordinary. And God will be able to say, that's right, that's why I raised him up. That's why I raised her up. The messengers God selects for the unusual. Point number three will be the ministers God saturates for usefulness. The ministers God saturates for usefulness. usefulness. Tell me number one. The man God seeks for his use. What kind of man? What kind of woman? What kind of youth? What kind of child does God seek? That he says, my hands are on you. My job I have specially for you. The assignment of life that will bring life to all the people I have need for you. What kind of men are those men? What kind of women are those women? I want you to think about yourself. That you are living in a special dispensation at a special time. And the almighty God is searching. He comes to every community. He comes to every nation. He comes to your place. And he says, can I use this material? Can I put heaven? Can I put the power? Can I put the spirit? Can I put anointing? Can I put unction in this particular vessel and use this one for something that the generations to come will be writing about? Are you there? You can do something that generations after you will note and then you set a standard. You set a model that other people come in at us. If Jesus tarries, They'll say, Pastor so-and-so. They'll say, Sister so-and-so. They'll say, that young man, that young woman, this is what he did. This is the legacy he laid down. And they're going to build on the legacy you laid down in Jesus' name. What kind of man would you be? What kind of woman would you be to make that possible? Selected. Set apart. Special. Unique. Different. Distinct. In the midst of people. And that I'm talking about here tonight. Whatever has not happened in the past will happen to you tonight. 
the places you have, you have not even started the journey you'll start a new journey tonight a journey to profitability and a journey to uniqueness a journey to the place where god will use you uh, something is going to start with you in jesus name what kind of man what kind of woman come back to ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30 it says and i sought and i sought and i sought for a man and i sought for a woman among them in the midst of us here god is seeking for somebody and he says that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that i should not destroy it lord if i know the kind of person you're searching for i'll make myself available lord if i know the kind of person you're searching for whatever the qualities are other people did it in their generation lord i will do it am i talking for somebody there you will do it in jesus name number one there'll be people who have number one secured pardon secured pardon and there's no condemnation in their heart already they know their sins are forgiven they have seen jesus christ on the cross of calvary and jesus christ has told them he said your sins which are many are all forgiven go in peace because you're saved go in peace because you are now a child of god they have secured pardon look at this in romans chapter 4 romans chapter 4 i'm reading here from verse 7 romans chapter 4 we're looking at verse 7 saying blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered blessed is the man to whom the lord will not impute iniquity he has forgiven your sin he has set you free he has put all your sins in the depths of the sea and he says i'll never remember them anymore there's no use for you remembering them because you have a kind of pardon that is secure a kind of pardon that is settled a kind of pardon that you know it's there and the blood of jesus christ secures that number one then is a man is a woman is a youth is a child of secured pardon number two the people or the men and women of secret prayer secret prayer they're the people that understand without him i can do nothing without him i cannot go far and because i know that i depend on him i trust him and all the grace i need all the strength i need will come from him and because of that they know they should be people of secret prayer your own sins are forgiven and the forgiveness and the pardon is settled and it is secured and now you know that you need to pray it will be a man a woman of secret prayer isaiah chapter 59 isaiah chapter 59 and we're reading here from verse 16 isaiah chapter 59 verse 16 here it says and he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor he wondered there's no intercessor and therefore his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness it sustained him you know if you're going to do what other people have not done why have they not done it? because their human strength could not carry them because their human power could not carry them because their human knowledge ingenuity could not carry them they need a power from on high they needed something to flow into their lives from other places that is the reason why you need to be a man a woman a youth a child of secret prayer number three is a man a woman of sanctification fine purity god wants to use some but god is holy did you hear those angels singing and shouting holy 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 is the lord god almighty uh -huh. if any vessel then if any instrument then if any tool then is going to serve the lord that person number one it is a secured pardon number two there is secret prayer number three there's sanctifying and uh, sanctifying purity it tells us in second timothy chapter two second timothy we're looking at uh, chapter two and we're reading from verse 21 the people god seeks to use 
the men, the women that God seeks to use. It says, if a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified. And it says, and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. That's you there. I said, that's you right there. You know, it's not a purity in your own strength and purity in your own struggle. It's the purity that comes as a gift from God. And it says, yes, I want to use you. And if you make yourself available, I'll clean you up. Never mind. I will purge you. I'll purify you as you surrender yourself unto the Lord. He will do it in Jesus' name. You know, when God does that, then he makes you the very righteousness of God in Christ. And as you go out, as you move out, when the devil sees you, he'll see that righteousness of God upon your life. And the anointing that breaks the yoke will flow through your life in Jesus' name. And this person we're talking about, the man, the woman, the child, the boy, the girl, will be a person of supernatural power. Supernatural power. You know, if God is going to use us like he doesn't use ordinary people, like he doesn't use a fleshly people, like he doesn't use the natural people, we need to have the power from the high. Uh, that's why Jesus said in Luke chapter 24, Luke chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 47. In Luke chapter 24, reading from verse 47, it says and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem and ye are witnesses of this things. and ye who are the people there and ye are witnesses you'll be a witness Peter is gone Paul is gone all those apostles are gone we are the people here today the brothers and the sisters and as God used them is going to use you and it's going to use us to be dynamic witnesses, effective witnesses in Jesus' name. But look at what he says in verse 49. And then he said, Behold, I sent the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured with, tell me, until ye be endured with, that's the kind of power you want. I said, until ye be endured with power from on high. It's coming supernatural power you see that's what we carry and that's what flows with the anointing that when you meet the sick with that power the sick will get healed and when you meet those who are demon possessed with that power and the courage and the conviction the moment you say in the name of jesus those demons will be cast out and whatever problem may confront you or your family or anybody because you have this supernatural power the power of the holy ghost working in you nothing will be impossible in jesus name men women youths children of secured pardon of secret prayer of sanctifying purity of supernatural power of steadfast persuasion of steadfast persuasion you see if we're going to be able to reach out to the people and the people are going to have an impact upon their lives conviction coming upon them there must be persuasive speaking we must be able to show them the way of the cross and the way of salvation in a persuasive way, steadfast, persuasion. And then you yourself, you're persuaded beyond any shadow of doubt. This is what God has called you to do. And this is what you are going to do. You'll do it effectively in Jesus' name. In Luke chapter 9, Luke chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 51. And it came to pass when the time was come that ye should be received up. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. He was persuaded beyond any shadow of doubt. He was the only one to be the savior of the world. There's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved except the name of Jesus. He had that inner persuasion. 
that unshakable persuasion, that steadfast persuasion. And therefore, he was looking at Jerusalem. He said, that's where I'm going to pay the price for the salvation of the whole of humanity. And he set his face there, steadfast, steadfast persuasion. When you understand that there is something to be done that no other person can do. When you understand there is a ministry. When you understand there is an impact. When you understand there is a field you ought to cover that no other person will cover. Steadfast persuasion. Those are the people that move things in the world but the people that say, I don't know if I don't do it, another person will do it. If I don't do it, maybe God will raise somebody to replace me. Those people never do anything but the people that have steadfast persuasion and they say i will and they say i can and they say i must and they say this is what i was born for and it is going to be done those are the people that succeed and thank god i'm one of them i say thank god i'm one of them the people of steadfast persuasion these are people number six of soul searching preaching soul searching preaching when they talk they penetrate the hearts of men and women when they talk they impact the lives of men and women that's their preaching will not be superficial the preaching will not be uncertain. The preaching will not be something you are not really sure what they are aiming at. They have a target and they have a goal and that's to arrest the hearts of men. And because of that, they come with soul searching preaching. Look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. I'm reading here from verse 37. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 verse 37. Now, when they heard this, they were preached in their heart. And they said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? That's the kind of preaching that gets people into the kingdom. That's the kind of preaching God is going to give you. He'll give you the word. He'll give you the fire within you. He will give you the anointing. He will impact you with power. And then, number one, you'll be a man of secured pardon. There's no guilt. There's no condemnation. You'll be a man, a woman of secret prayer. You burst your message in prayer. You burst your ministry in prayer. You burst your assignment in prayer. And you literally, literally take all the souls. You're going to talk to take them to God in prayer. A man of secret prayer. A man of sanctifying purity. He purifies your thoughts and your hearts and your mind and your inner mind. And the blood of Jesus makes you not only to, that you are purified, you are fresh. And as you are fresh like that, and then power, supernatural power coming out of you like a dagger that comes to the heart of the sinners, and then they begin to shout, what shall we do to be saved? And you are a man of steadfast persuasion, and a man of soul searching preaching, a man of superior purpose, a man of superior purpose. You are not like every dick and Harry. You're not like every neighbor. You're not like the next door believer. You're not like the next door neighbor. You don't have any goal in life. They don't have any purpose in life. But you, there is a purpose. You know, you are born for something. And you are in the kingdom for at such a time like this. You know, there is something you are called to do. And you will not die until it is done. I said you will not die until it is done. You know, sickness comes. You say, no, this sickness cannot make an end of me because there's something for me to do. I've not done. I must do it. And then there is a tragedy that befalls people around. And then the devil is saying, maybe you are going. You say, no, I cannot go now. It's not my time yet. How do you know it's not your time? There is something I was born for that has not been done that must be done. I'm talking to somebody there. There's somebody, there's something you came to this church for. Something you came into the kingdom for. Something you were born into the kingdom for. It has not been, there's no way I can die now. Can you say that? There's no way you can die now. I can't hear you. There's no way. What have you done? The sin you were created for, the sin that is on the record of God in heaven has not been done. I'm telling you, this thing will be done. 
And this same must be done. And because you are a person of superior purpose to all the other people around you, that's why you are the man, you are the woman, there's no other person, you are going to do it and it will be done in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 26. Acts of the Apostles chapter 26, and I'm reading here from verse 16. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26, and we're reading from verse 16. Look at what it says in verse, in verse 16. Acts 26, verse 16. But rise, somebody there will rise. Your inner man will rise up. The one inside you will rise up. All that weakness, everything will go away. Any rope and any chain that tied you down, everything will be broken tonight. Because it's time for you to rise up. Rise, it says, and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. Thank God there's a purpose for my life. I said, thank God there's a purpose for my life. It says, rise up. Why are you lying down there? As if, you know, I'm helpless, I'm weak. No, that's not the day of weakness. This is not the year of weakness. It's the year of rising up. Somebody there, I said, it's the year of rising up. Somebody there, I want to see you. I said, it's the year of rising up. That's why, you know, you know this man, you know, if you, see, you think you are bad, Saul of Tarsus was bad. But now God got hold of that man. God is getting hold of you today. It says, rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee. He will make you. To make thee, it will manufacture something new. To make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things and the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom I now send thee. They will not hurt you. They will not kill you. They will not destroy you. He sent you to that location. He sent you to that region. He sent you to that locality for a purpose. And that purpose will be fulfilled to open their eyes. And to turn them from darkness unto light. And from the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins. And inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. You are the man. You are the woman. You are the believer. And it will be done in Jesus name. A man of secure pardon. A man of secret prayer. A woman of sanctifying purity. A woman of supernatural power. A youth of steadfast persuasion. And a minister of soul searching preaching. And a person of superior purpose. That's what it takes. And if God can see that in you. And that he will see it in you. Those are the people he is seeking to use. I come to point number two. The messengers God selects for the unusual. Now, you have all these qualities. And you're saying, Lord, I'm here. Lord, I'm waiting. I want it done. I want you to saturate me. And I want you to select me. I want you to do that for which you have created me. The messengers God selects. For the unusual. What kind of messengers are those? Number one, uncompromising messengers. Uncompromising messengers. God looks at you in your heart, in your thoughts, in your brain, in your reasoning, in your blood veins, in anything within you. There is no iota, no atom, no cell of compromise. That all the things they call compromise, all the things they call cringing, all the things they call cowardice, all the things they call bending and yielding to the enemy, everything has been eradicated from your life. I'm talking to somebody there. That God will give you that strength of the inner man. That power in your inner man. That God says, this is the way. 
and you are going that way. There may be million lions on the way you are getting there. There may be a million persecutors in the way you are getting there. There may be a Nebuchadnezzar that is setting up a furnace of fire. You say, that is nothing. My God will neutralize the power of that fire. The man that God is going to use today and the woman that God is selecting today will be a person that, number one, is uncompromised. I'm looking at First Kings chapter 22. First Kings chapter 22. And we're reading here from verse 6. First Kings chapter 22. And we're reading from verse 6. Since then, the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men. And said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle? Or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver each into the hands of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides? All these 400 that we might inquire of him. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imlam, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But, 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 <laughs> some people cannot bear Nebuchadnezzar hitting them. Some people cannot bear Pharaoh hitting them. Some people cannot bear Ahab hitting them. Ahab said, there's one man, his name is, he pronounced the name like he didn't know how to pronounce the name Imla, but I hate him. Whatever hatred, you will stand. Yeah. Somebody there said, whatever hatred, you will stand. Yeah. See, the devil hates the message coming from heaven. The devil hates the father. He hates God the Son. And he hates the Holy Ghost. And the devil hates the men and the women of God. But those hatreds mean nothing. Because upon this rock, tell me, I will build my church. And the gates of hell cannot prevail and shall not prevail against it in Jesus' name. And you are a minister in that church. The church that Satan cannot conquer. The church that Satan cannot overcome. We are on the winning side. And so he said, but I hate him. And then when he said that, the other king that Jehoshaphat said, you don't say that. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. And so they sent for this man. And as they sent for him, look at verse 9. And the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten hither, Micaiah, the son of Imla. Look at verse 13 now. In verse 13, and the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold now, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy words, I pray thee, be like the words of one of them, and speak that which is good. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, can you say that? What the Lord says unto me. Say that. What the Lord says unto me. That I will speak. You see, that's an uncompromising minister, uncompromising messenger of the Lord. The people that God selects to use today, number one, they are uncompromising. Number two, they are uncommon. Uncommon. They're not like every dick and harry. They're not like, you know, you can buy them with money, just a few uh, thousands of currency. You can buy them at the market. You can see them on the side of the road. They are precious. They're scarce, they're uncommon, they're distinguished, they're different from all the other people around Daniel chapter 6. I pray that you will be uncompromising. You are already, the Lord will strengthen it. You'll be uncommon in Jesus' name. 
Amen. You will not be a minister, a messenger that they can put a price on. That you can say, what's your price? Give us your price. We'll pay for it. And then you say this. And then they put the word in your mouth. You say, no, I have a message from heaven already that money cannot change. That whatever it is, the world is offering will not change. We're looking at Daniel chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 1. It pleased Darius to search over the kingdom and hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom and over three presidents of whom Daniel was. Tell me now. It was forced. Were you the first? Yeah. You come from the back row, you come to the front. Yeah. You'll be forced in Jesus' name. Yeah. And then he goes on to say, he'll be forced, and then that the princes might give accounts, might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents. Preferred above the presidents. Somebody there preferred above the presidents. Well, why don't you understand? That's the place the Lord is calling you to. You know, they say in your school, if you're a teacher, this one says I'm a Christian, this one says I'm a Christian, that one says I'm a Christian. Let the school see that you are a Christian with distinction. You are a Christian with a difference. You are a Christian, an uncommon Christian, an uncompromising Christian that you have, you are worth your salt and you are worth the name of Christ. And when they can, you know, go to the other people, can you do this and change this and change that? They never come to you because they know that you are an uncommon minister. Where is he? Amen. Amen. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. And you look at that verse again, it says, and this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Number one, uncompromising. Number two, uncommon. Number three, uncomplaining. Uncomplaining. You see, uh, there are some people, a little thing happens. And then they begin to complain. And I'm saying, if you are the minister God is going to use, he has set you up. If you see something that is not proper, that is not right, don't complain, rise up and change it. If you see something that is substandard, if you are the minister, the one God will use, you don't complain, you rise up and you put it right. If you see somebody that is something that is crooked, don't sit down and complain. If you are the man, if you are the woman, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and I will stand the gap before, between me and the people and then I found none so that I will not destroy them and I found none. If you are the one God has found, don't complain, rise up and change it. You'll be a change agent in Jesus' name. And so you, you see the people, it's a who don't know they are special. They don't know they're the kingdom for such a time like this. They don't know that God has so sure to put that thing right and to put that person right and to organize that thing and to change that thing and to improve on that thing. That's why they are waiting behind and then they are complaining. Some people are not doing this. You are the person. Who are the some people? Some people are not putting this right here. You are the one, the man of the hour and the woman of the hour. I am the man of the hour. And if anything needs to be changed, you won't complain. Just rise up and put it right. And people like you, thank God you are there. Where is he? I'm looking for that woman. I said, you are there. God bless you. People like you, anywhere you are, no complaint, no complaint, you will set that thing right. You put that thing right and the church will be happy that you are there. And people are going to be praying that you will not die soon. You will have extra time. God gave Ezekiah how many years extra? Fifteen. Uh -uh. When you have not finished your work, you are the one to set that right, to set that right, to set that right. God needs you. The church needs you. The sinners need you. The nation needs you. You cannot die now. 
extra time in your life. No complaint, no complaint. If other people have not done right and something happened to them, it is not from you we're going to be any any complaint. We're looking at Leviticus chapter 10. Leviticus chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 1. Leviticus chapter 10. And we're reading from verse 1. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1. Here's what it says. And neither but Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer, and they put fire thereon, and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord, and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said unto Aaron, this is it that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come near me, and before all the people I will be glorified. Listen to this and uh, tell me. And, uh, and Aaron held his peace. You know, a man like that, no complaint, no complaint, you'll be the uncomplaining man. You see the people that murmur, they're not, they're not the head, they're not, you know, the people going ahead of the crowd. The people who complain, they're not the people that do something in life. The people who are, they criticize everything, that's not right and that's not good and that's not good. They are not the people that make any change in life. But number one, the uncompromising people. Number two, the uncommon people. Number three, the uncomplaining people. Number four, the unconditional people, unconditional, unconditional. They rendered their service without attaching any condition. Okay, if they give me this, then I will do this. That's conditional. If they appreciate me this way, then I will do that. Those people, who is going to appreciate you? They didn't even appreciate Jesus Christ. They didn't appreciate Peter, John, and James. They persecuted them. They didn't appreciate Paul, the apostle. If you will, if you're waiting for, they appreciate me, they appreciate me. What, what I've done already, see what I did yesterday. See what I did last week. I'm waiting. When they give me appreciation for that, then I will be encouraged to uh, do something more. They're waiting for encouragement from outside. My encouragement comes from inside. I said it comes from inside. If the Holy Ghost is inside you, it's a spirit of comfort. If Christ is living inside you, it's the one that sends you to do the work. It's the one that says, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Rise up and do it again. And therefore, you are not waiting for something from outside. Don't wait because, uh, you know, what's inside you, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Look at this. Look at Luke chapter 10. I'm looking at Luke chapter 10. In Luke chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 33. Luke chapter 10, we're reading from verse 33. It says in verse 33, it is talking about uh, the good Samaritan that came. In verse 33, but a certain Samaritan. In his journey, came where he was, that the man that was left half dead. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And went to him, and bound up his wounds, and poured in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. You'll take care of people. You know, there are hundreds and thousands of people in this world that will not die prematurely because of you. You see them there. If this good Samaritan didn't attend to it, the priest passed over and the Levites passed on, that man would have died. But because of this good Samaritan, that man did not die. Because of you, they will not die. I said because of you, they will not die. If they need food, you will feed them. If they need clothing, you will clothe them. If they need accommodation, you accommodate them. If they need school fees, you'll pay the school fees. If they need life, you'll give them that life. If they need job, you'll give them the job. If they need prayer, you'll give them prayer. If they need sustainers, you'll give them sustainers. Because, because you are there, they will not die in their sin. 
And so this man took him to the inn and they said to take care of him. Verse 35. Look at this. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence. That was a great amount of money that time. And gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him. And whatsoever, whatsoever, help me shout that word whatsoever whatsoever thou spendest more when i come again i will repay thee no condition no condition if you don't spend too much if you don't spend more than this because if you go beyond that my strength cannot carry that my pause cannot carry that he said my love is unconditional those are the people god uses the people that don't set conditions number one they are uncompromising people and I'm seeing them tonight. And they are uncommon people. They are before me tonight. And they are uncomplaining people. Thank God we complain to the past. From today, no more complaints in Jesus' name. And then they are unconditional people. Unconditional people. Whatsoever you spend, whatever it will take. Whatever it will take. Whatever time it will take. Whatever treasure it will take. Whatever money it will take, whatever energy it will take, whatever resources it will take, I am here. I will do it. This single life, I will spend it for people. I will spend it for the church. I'll spend it for the kingdom. And there is no condition. Whatever it requires, I will pay the price. Did you say that? Whatever is required, whatever is required, I will pay the price. Number five, unconquerable people. Unconquerable people. You know the story. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And here, these Nebuchadnezzar said, tell me, if you will not bow down, and I decide to cast you into the lake of fire, into the, into the furnace of fire, who is that God that will deliver you out of my hand? Uh -uh. Now that you mention who is that God, we know that you are fighting. You are not fighting with us. You are fighting with the God of heaven. If it be so, go ahead and make your fire. I want to tell you, we will not bow down to your idol. We bow down to the God of heaven. And these knees that bow down to the Almighty will not bow down to any other idol. Where are those knees? Tap them like this. These knees are bowed down to the Almighty. Say that. Will not bow down to any idol. I have the people, I have the conquerors here tonight. I have the giant killers here tonight. The Lord will be with you. His power will be with you. And all the fire of Nebuchadnezzar will be neutralized in Jesus' name. Nebuchadnezzar was angry. If you were there, you had seen his face. His face alone could even spark the fire that will kill somebody. And he made the fire seven times, sort of. And he bowed, tell me their names Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he threw them in the fire. And the heat of the fire was so much, the flame, that the people that threw them in, as the flame came out like this, all those people died. They were not even inside the fire. You know, the things that will kill the people that have not even smelled where you are going to, and yet you will not have a smell of the fire on you. And then as they got him there, the fourth one, the son of God. He was waiting. As he got there like this, Jesus was there. Before you get there, I'll be waiting for you. In persecution, he will be with you. In the trial, he'll be with you. Whatever the challenge, the fourth one, an appearance of the son of God, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. When you pass through the fire, it will not burn you. And when you pass through the river, it will not drown you. And then they were walking. you will walk inside that fire inside the persecution you will not feel any heat at all and Nebuchadnezzar rose up and then he looked and he said tell me people how many people did we cast into the fire they said three he said I see four you, they will see four I said they will see four that's Shadrach that's Meshach that's Abednego oh, oh, look at this one this one the fourth one is like the son of God. He will be with you. 
And then he said, Shake, grab Meshach, and then go, Servants of the living God, come out. And they came out and they inspected them. And they looked at them. They couldn't find any trace of the fire. They had conquered. It's my turn to conquer. I said, They had conquered. It is my turn to conquer. You will conquer. I said, You will conquer. They were not afraid. Don't be afraid. God has an assignment for you in Babylon. He has an assignment for you in Rome. He has an assignment for you in your district. He has an assignment for you in the city in which you are. And until that assignment is, is done, you're unconquerable in Jesus' name. Now, number six, unconnected. Unconnected. You, you already studied that, you know, outside the scripture days a week. Because, you know, David was unconnected. He was not connected with the king. Was so he was not connected with the army, they didn't even call him. He was not connected with Lab, the brother. What have you come to do here? This is not your area. This is my area. I said, This is my area. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I was born for this purpose. I was born for this reason. Saul did not know. In an earlier chapter, God has said, I have found the man. I have found the man. And David did in his heart, God found me. God found me. I said, God found me. I said, God found me. And there was a battle. And they didn't invite the one that will kill Goliath. They didn't invite him there. He was unconnected. Don't worry about connection. Already from heaven you are connected. Already the spirit of God has connected you. And then he came in there and he said, what are you finding here? You're not connected. You think I'm not connected? I am. I said I am. And then he got to Saul. And Saul said, oh my boy, good intention. It's all right. But you know, you cannot do this one. You are not connected with the army. This Goliath had been a soldier, a warrior for me, say youth. But you, he said, let me tell you. You didn't know when I was connected. I'll tell you a story. I was in the farm, on the field, and I was looking, I was tending, I was taking care of my father's sheep, and a lion came, and to show you my connection, when that lion came and took one of the sheep, I, I just got at him, and he smote him, because I'm con am I not connected? Are you not connected? It's a vertical connection. What they were talking about, they were talking about the ground level connection. He was talking about the supernatural heavenly connection. He said, another time the bear came and came like I said, you will not take any of the lamb, any of the sheep that I'm, oh, that I'm overseeing. And then took him and then shred him to pieces. And he said, this Goliath, Philistine shall be like one of them. And uh, Saul said, I didn't know you were that connected. I oh, are looking at our register. Oh, I'm not in your register. I'm in his register. Somebody there, I am in his register. And then he went. As, uh, as he came, Goliath looked at him. He looked at this unconnected man. Who is this one? The one that is coming with this is a boy that is, uh, you know, throwing stones to kill rabbit. Am I the one you have come for? And then he cursed him. And then uh, David said, You come to me with sword and stave. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, whom you have defied. If you are in God, you are taller than them. You are higher than them. It says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, mighty tower, and the righteous runneth into it, and is saved. I thank God you are saved. And then, before Goliath knew it, that young man just threw things like this and went right to his head and he slew him. And he conquered, even though he was unconnected. You know, there are some people, I'm not a coordinator. Uh -huh. What does that mean? That's, that, that, that means nothing. I'm not a woman leader. That means nothing. I am not a worker. Are you not a worker? Heaven has recorded that you are a worker. I don't know which register you are looking at. Look at me here. You may not find me on your register, but I I am a worker. Somebody there, I am a worker. Somebody there, I am a leader. 
you know, you go into a, you go any place, even the way you walk, people say, who is this man? See him walking confidently and see him, the way he's talking. And then they check their register and you are not in their register. Then they come to you and they say, sir, who are you? Then you say, I'm the one connected with heaven. I'm the one connected with power because he has sent me to heal the sick. He has sent me to open the blind eyes. He has sent me that when I mention the name of Jesus, those sick people, they're going to get healed in Jesus' name. Am I talking to somebody there today? You are connected in Jesus' name. And then they unconsidered, unconsidered, unconsidered. You know, they didn't even consider Consider him. Because uh, Samuel went to Jesus' house to appoint a new king. They brought number one, number two, number three, number four. They brought all of them. And Samuel said, are these all your children? Oh, there's another one. But that one, we don't consider that one. It's on the field. And it's the one that is going to do what God has appointed to be done. And maybe they think they have uh, you know, distributed all the assignment and all the offices, uh, you know, coordinator and location pastor and and women leader, and the zona leader, and youth leader, children, church worker, singer, choir, usher, um, security, everything. They've distributed everything, and now you come, and you say, I'm, I'm here, ah, you are there. What are you going to do now? And he is the one going to be at the head of the crowd. I said he's going to be at the head of the crowd. And then the anointed, God said, that's the man, that's the man, that's the man. I see the man right there. That's the woman, I see the woman right there. And the anointing of God will come upon your life. Uncompromising, number one. Uncommon, number two. Uncomplaining, number three. Unconditional, number four. Unconquerable, number five. Unconnected, number six. Tell me number seven unconsidered but God has considered you. I come to point number three. Now point number three the ministers God saturates for usefulness. The ministers God saturates for usefulness. You'll be useful. Your life will not be a waste. Your time in this church will not be a waste. And the area of what the Lord has assigned you to, something will happen in that place. You will do something of consequence in Jesus' name. If Jesus tarries, uh, you know, at the end of this year, if Jesus tarries, you look back to the rest of this year, you'll say, it was the best year I ever lived in my life. And then this year, if Jesus tarries, will become a stepping stone for next year. Something greater. And something higher, something more fulfilling, you will accomplish in Jesus' name. Now, the, the ministers, God saturates for usefulness. It will saturate your life. And then you'll be like no other man, like no other woman, no other youth, and no other child in Jesus' name. Look at Job chapter, chapter 2. Job chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 3. Job chapter 2 verse 3 And the Lord said unto Satan As thou considered my servant Job That there is none like him in the earth That's it There's none like him in the earth If God could be so proud of you If God could boast about you if God could use you as a special son, as a special daughter, and brag about you, I say, Satan, have you considered, mention your name there? I said, have you considered, mention your name there? Have you considered so and so, so and so? There's no man like him. There's no woman like her on the earth in this generation. He will do that for you. And now he will saturate you with power. Let me show you the kind of people we are talking about. F, that's for faithfulness. A, that's for availability. I, that's for invincibility. Not invisible, invincible. It means unconquerable actually. Invincible, invincibility. T, teachable. H, holy. F, tell me, faithful. A, available. I, invincible. T, teachable. 
H holy. When you put all that together, F A I T H, what's that? Uh, look at Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, and I'm reading here from verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11, we're looking at verse 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those of them that diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. F is faithful. Look at Abraham. We're looking at Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. And I'm reading from verse 1. Genesis chapter 22. And we're reading here from verse 1. In Genesis chapter 22 verse 1. It says, and it came to pass... After these things that God did tempt, test, tried Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the, into the land of Moriah. And offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his servants of young men with him. And I seek a son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up. And went unto the place of the which God had told him. That's faithfulness. Faithfulness. No matter what God required. No matter what God demanded. No matter what God was asking for. Abraham just said, here am I. Here am I. You'll be faithful like that in Jesus' name. A is being available. Available. You know, whatever gift you have, if you're not available, you can't do much. Whatever calling you have, if you're not available, what can you do? But you must be available. We're looking at Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37, and I'm reading from verse 13. Genesis chapter 37, and we're reading from verse 13. In verse 13 it says, And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come. I pray, and I will send thee unto them. And he said unto him, Here am I. Here am I. I'm sending you to the people that hate you. Here am I. I'm sending you to the people that frown at you. Here am I. I'm sending you to the people that don't believe in your dream. Here am I. I'm, tell, I'm sending you to the people that say, Here comes the dreamer. Let us kill him and see what will become of his dream. Here am I. He said, I am available. Available. You see, there are some people. I don't know whether I want to go to that district or not. Those people, they don't show love to me. When my daughter was going to get married, yeah, can you imagine that they didn't even support and I've been laboring over them for such a long time, you tell me to go to that district, if that is the only thing that remains to be done, I am not going. Another person said, you know, I was sick and they never three days I was inside the house even to eat was a challenge and these people in our community they didn't even say, how are you there? I'm going to that place, not on your life, I'm not going to that place and the last time I was there I don't know, I prepared my message and I thought I was going to give them something great and the people I I saw their faces. I was afraid of them. They were frowning at me as if we had fought before. I'm not going to preach to them again. Joseph said, I'm available. I'm available. Somebody says there, I'm available. Send me anywhere. I'm available. Ah, see how you're pronouncing that word available. As if it is not in your dictionary. That word is in my dictionary. I said that word is in my dictionary. I am available. You'll be available in Jesus' name. Number one, like Abraham, you're faithful. Like Joseph, you're available. We're looking at, we're looking at Exodus chapter 3, Exodus chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 4. Exodus chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 4. It says, and Moses said, and, and chapter 3, verse, verse 4, and, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him, 
him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here am I. Look at verse 10, come now. Therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest uh, bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. He did it, I will do mine. I said, he did it, I will do mine. He was invincible, unconquerable. This is the man that had run away into exile, out of Egypt. And then when God called him to go back there, he said, yes, I'm available. Here am I. I will go. Somebody there, I will go. Somebody there, I will go. F, faithful. Faithful Abraham. And A, available. Available Joseph. And I, invincible, invincible Moses. Now we're looking at First Samuel chapter 3. First Samuel chapter 3. And I'm reading here from verse 4. First Samuel chapter 3. First Samuel chapter 3. These are the people God will saturate. And God will use in a mighty way. First Samuel chapter 3. We're looking at verse 4. And, and the Lord called Samuel. And he answered here am I. Look at verse 6. And the Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not my son. Lie down again. I want you to look at verse 8 there. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called as at all that other times, Samuel, Samuel. That, and then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant here, teachable, teachable. You see, if God is going to use us, and thank God is going to use us, he'll use you mightily. He'll use you beyond your wildest expectation. You must be faithful. You must be available. You must be invincible. You must be teachable. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 5. Then said, I waste me. For I am undone. And uh, be, um, be, because I am a man of unclean leaves, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean leaves, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth. And said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Thy sin purged. Give me a good amen. amen. That's for holiness. H, holy. Holy. That's Isaiah. And the Lord, after that, you are available. Anybody available there? You are faithful. You'll be faithful in Jesus' name. You are invincible because the one that lives inside you is the mighty conqueror. And the world will not conquer you in Jesus' name. And you are teachable. That's why you are here. You are teachable. I see the way you write. I see the way you open your Bible. I see the way you soak in the word of God. My, my. You are teachable people. And because you are teachable, God is going to direct you. And it's going to lead you in the way that you will go. You will not miss the victory ministry in Jesus' name. And because of the purging, because of the purifying, because of the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb, you'll be holy in Jesus' name. And now after that has taken place, F-A-I-T-H, faithful, available, invincible, teachable, and holy. See what follows? Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, everybody, Here am I, 
send me. Then said I, everybody. Then said I. You are telling the Lord today, here am I, separate me. Here am I, set me apart. Here am I, search me. If there is any impurity inside me, if there is any reluctance inside me, if there is any reservation inside me, if there is anything that is tying me down and I don't want to move forward, here am I, search me. Here am I, stretch me. Make me elastic. Don't make me so rigid and don't make me so short-sighted that I cannot be stretched to go that way where I've never gone, what I've never done, what I've never said. The people have never read, Lord, here am I, stretch me. Here am I, sanctify me. Purify me. Any impurity, anything that will hinder the maximum use of my life and the maximum use of my talent, here am I, sanctify me. Here am I, sharpen me. If I'm dull, if I'm blunt, and I need to be sharpened so that anywhere I go, when I speak the word, it will pierce the hearts of the people listening to me. Here am I, sharpen me. Here am I, saturate me. Saturate me with the scripture. Saturate me with the spirit. Saturate me through and through that it will be flowing out of me. Here am I. Stir me up. Stir me up. If I'm kind of, you know, sitting down like a dead uh, log of wood, if uh, nothing interests me, nothing excites me, if I've been sitting down for a long time, I don't know how to be stirred up. Here am I. Stir me up. Here am I. Separate me. Here am I. Set me apart. Here am I, search me. Here am I, stretch me. Here am I, sanctify me. Here am I, sharpen me. Here am I, saturate me. Here am I, stir me up. Here am I, send me. Send me, Lord, send me. Anybody there? Rise up and let him, let him send you. Here am I, Lord, send me. My life must do something. My life must achieve something. I must do the thing you have called me to do. You called me for a time like this, a purpose like this. And I was created for such a time like this. I was born for such a time like this. Lord, here am I. Send me.